Hi, Joe Cerrone. Welcome to CAD 230 in this week's Zoom classroom meeting. Module 9 has been released. Module 9 is on assembly drawing, and we're going to be using a bottom-up assembly technique. And so we're going to work with these components. Some of these we've seen in previous chapter. This is from working with Revolve. This is, um, I believe it's chapter three or chapter four. And then these are some new components for creating this assembly drawing of the gate. You will need a part uh, for the first one, this T-joint. And so that's um, included in the, in the reference material in the beginning of the book, but I downloaded it for you. So um, if you just click on that link and then you open that file, let me move my SolidWorks onto the screen here. Uh, you'll get that component. So as we take a look at these uh, different assemblies and assembly drawings, let me take this one off. Uh, we'll be creating uh, these different assemblies. I did put some bonus work in there. I put in this pulley. And then um, I've also got uh, module 10. And uh, I've decided to make an assembly model part of the course because uh, we were looking at it as maybe printing it um, as a bonus, but it's only November 8th, and this will be a perfect project to incorporate into our work. So this will be our next um, assembly to create. And you can model this and 3D print it if you want. And so if we look at the, um, at the assignments for this week, uh, we're gonna go through and take the assembly drawing pretest first. And so you'll go and you'll locate that. I'm gonna view this as a student just so I can make sure that you can see it as well. And we'll go to quizzes and exams. And then we'll go to the assembly drawing pretest. And then if you click on that, And then you can click uh, to start it. It doesn't let me because I guess I'm faculty here. So if I come back as a faculty member, maybe it will. Again, take the assembly drawing pretest. Um, it's just used for gauging student uh, knowledge. And so here's my pretest. I can edit it doesn't let me take it. And so the assembly drawing pretest is nothing you need to do well on, just see if you have an understanding of it. And then we'll take a post test um, at the end of the semester to gauge if there was a change in your knowledge level of creating these assembly drawings. So please take the assembly drawing pretest so that I have good data. Um, Lab 9A is this first uh, assembly and it's this bottom up drawing technique. Uh, lab 9B is some other components that we've worked with in Lab 9C. And these files are available. I'm going to go back in as a student under content and then module nine. And so you can see I've got a PowerPoint here, which I'll go through and talk about. Lab 9A has got the video for how to do 9A and B has got the video for that. And then here, these are the components um, for the uh, bonus material. And we should see uh, some files for the um, assemblies for the gate components. And I'm not seeing those right now. So let me go back in. I'm gonna pause this recording. Resuming, so we were looking for the uh, components for lab 9C. And so lab 9C, here's the gate assembly. It's a zip file and you can click on this and then you can download that. Extract the files. And then you'll have the components needed to create the gate assembly. And let's take a look at those files um, as, we, as we work with these. So 
back to the main splash page here, uh, we're going to create these different assemblies. And then as we work with the assemblies, I've got some content here in my assembly drawing for parts and assemblies. I'm going to download that. And we'll open that. So as we work with these assembly drawings, what we wanna do is we wanna be able to take our individual parts and put those together. And um, let me switch these, there we go. And so as we work with these, what we're doing is we're combining two or more 3D parts into these components. And so these are our different parts. This is kind of a, a catapult uh, that you can see, and it's got these screws and it's got this ball and it's got a number of different components. And as we work with these different components, we're able to simulate motion and be able to create these different um, ways of making these individual components move. And so as we look at what we're going to do with creating assemblies is that first we'll have the geometry, we'll have our individual parts. And then what we'll do is we'll put those parts together in what's called an assembly. And we'll use what's called mates, which is like a paper clip. And it's like, we can get these parts to fit together like Legos and things by using these different mates. And so as we work with these things, uh, we'll look at the best way to kind of handle working with assembly drawings. And so when we create an assembly, we start off with an assembly drawing. And we can choose these different drawing standards that are set up by SolidWorks. And then as we bring these things in, we can then bring them in. And we're going to bring them in from the bottom up method, which means that we've already drawn and created these assembled parts. Top down is more difficult. That's where you have um, an assembly that you create the parts and then spin out and create the parts themselves. So with this bottom up method, we're going to create each component and then we're going to insert those components. Whereas the top down, it's more complicated. We start kind of with the assembly and then we create the parts in context and then save those out. All right, so as we look at the way we're gonna create these different assemblies, we'll have these different parts and we'll be able to bring those parts in. The first part that we bring in will be fixed. It'll have an F on it as we bring it in and it'll be attached to the origin. And then once we bring that fixed part in, we can then go and add additional components. And as we drag them in, we can then mate them with these different ways of holding them together. I would like you to use pack and go when you turn in your parts. And so once you've created an assembly, use pack and go because if you assemble it and then you turn in the individual parts in the Dropbox, it won't hold the links together. And so you need to use the pack and go. So let's take a look at that. And so as we work on our drawings, here's what we're gonna be working with. And so we can start off with this drawing right here. And so here's an assembly of these different revolved components. If we wanted to look at it, we can see this first object right here. This one in the middle of the gray has an F next to it. That means that that object is fixed. And then if I expand out the mates, as I hover over them, we can see the mates that were used to hold these different components together. And as we apply these mates, we'll be able to then link them to move things. Now, it doesn't follow all the rules in real life, like we can go through walls and, and go through components. But the idea is, is that we can simulate motion and then we can take away what's called these different degrees of freedom for those different components. And so this will be one of our components that we'll put together. And if we look at that in D2L, the way that D2L has got us working on that is that we would start off
with this bottom up assembly technique, we'd work in inches and we'd start off by creating an assembly drawing and then start off by bringing in the center ball joint. They want you to turn on the origins and then to once you have the origin placed and you drag and drop the first component in. And once the first component has been inserted into the assembly drawing, we then bring in the other components by browsing for them. And so we drag and drop these other components in. And then we start to mate them. And so mating them is like, how do we want to attach them? And so this first one, we're going to select these two circular shapes. And SolidWorks is very smart. It kind of comes up with a solution that it will suggest, and it'll suggest to use these concentric mates. And so we continue to build these different concentric mates for these different components until we have the part fully assembled. And then we save that as the ball joint assembly. And what I'd like you to do once you have the assembly completed is to save it as a uh, pack and go, and I'll just take a different one. So once I have that, what I'll do is I'll do the save as a pack and go, and let's see if it's under save as, or if it's under a different spot here. I'm gonna pause and check for that. So what we wanna do is we're gonna go to pack and go, once we have our assembly created, and then the pack and go will go out and, and find all the files in the locations where we have placed them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to save it to a folder or we're going to save it to a zip file. We're going to save it to a zip file and then I can browse where that file will be. And so I'm going to put it into my bench vice drawing assembly folder. And so I'm going to call it Joe's bench vice. And I'll say save. And let's put it back one here. And then I'll hit save. And then that will create an assembly drawing or a zip file that I can then use within that. So if I come take a look at my desktop, So here's my Joe's Bench Vice uh, pack and go. And if I take a look at that, what it's done is it's created, uh, it's, it's put all those folders, all those files into the folder. So use pack and go as you create these. We'll also be creating this Bench Vice uh, that's gonna be our project next week. And we can also 3D print this. All right, uh, back to the main splash page. As we start to look at what to wrap up, um, you can download the files for the gate assembly. These are gonna be your own individual components that you'll need to model. The uh, part that's in the center is located in the main splash page and you can download that. With that, I'm gonna end the Zoom uh, meeting or, or stop the recording and open things up for questions.